let's finish up making these adorable short short earrings for the summer they are going to be gorgeous hey, so let's finish up our summertime fun super cute earrings that we're gonna be wearing so these are our cut off short shorts and they are just so cute so let's finish making those i'm going to show you how to put the pockets on which is nothing more than a square and a v that's how we're going to do the pocket so of course you know that you're just going to need your white paint or any cream or buttermilk paint you decide to use buttermilk color and so this is the folk art acrylic paint it's called wicker white and this is actually a matte acrylic and of course we're going to give this a gloss base because it'll make them stand out you could also use like some glitter. Um, you could do, again, different color jean shorts, whatever you wanna do, but these are to represent denim. So let's, we're using our same um, paint paintbrush, I'm sorry, that has like the little thin liner. Caleb, okay. I was just talking to my son, he's showing my husband videos. So this is a pair that I had already previously done. This is the pair that we were working on the other day. So this is a smaller pair. Remember, you can do these in multiple sizes. So all you're gonna do is draw a square. So we're gonna do a line here, a line there. And these just represent the pockets on the back of the jeans. You don't even have to think about it, right? They can just be super cute squares. And you can even put a little design in the pocket. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do on the pocket of one of them. It doesn't have to be a design on both sides, but I have an idea in mind is gonna be super cute. We're gonna do a little flower on the pocket. So not overthinking it, just making a square to represent the pockets. And then on the larger pair, we're gonna add a V to do a different style pocket. Cause you know, every pair of jeans is not the same and the pockets are different. Mess it up. The pockets are different on all jeans. I think the, my hand slipped, so I'm gonna have to make this square a little bit larger too. So there we go. So they don't have to be perfect, but look how cute they are. So those are the pockets on that pair of denim jeans. And now on these, on these cut off short shorts, we are gonna do a square, we're gonna do a pocket similar to these. So notice how they have a square and a V. That's what we're gonna do there. So we're gonna do a line here, a line across, a line down, and then we're gonna do just a V. And you're gonna wanna be really light-handed with the brush because the brush tends to spread out to try to do its own thing. Now let's say, notice that I got that a little bit wider than I want. I can go back over that blue paint and we can clean that up, so I'm not gonna obsess over that. So all we did was a square, I'm sorry, three lines and a V for that pocket. And again, they don't have to be perfect. You're just doing pockets on the back of the jeans. A line, a line across, a line down, and a V. You can be a bit more of a perfectionist if you want to, but I just feel like it's gonna translate. It's gonna be super cute. So let's do this one and then we're gonna let these dry and then we'll come back after they dry. And I'm gonna add the little designs I'll show you. So on the smaller pair, I have a super cute idea of what we're gonna put on the pockets. And on this larger pair, we're gonna add a few more um, like white seams to represent stitching. It's gonna be really, really cute. So we're just doing our square and we're doing our V. And again, you could use stickers on your little pockets to look like studs. Um, you could use some glitter, anything you want to do to design out the jeans because, I mean, the sky's the limit of what you can think about of what would be on a pair of blue jeans, right? So, super cute. We're going to let those dry. Let me make sure they're close enough. I think I want to make this one a little bit larger somehow.
Okay. And let me see these, see if they match up. So I need to make this one a little bit bigger. And I need to make this one a little bit wider. So you can always go back and touch up. It's not concrete, it's paint, right? We say that all the time. So just make sure they're even enough or close enough. But again, if you get too wide in your brush or your hand's not steady enough, like my hand's not super steady, I can go back and touch these up with the blue paint, okay? But I'm pretty satisfied with them that they're close enough now. So we're gonna let them dry. And then we are going to come back. I forgot I have this pair over here. I could be putting the pockets on. So let me do that right quick since we already got the paint out. And I made these look like stone wash. And just to tell you how I did that, so I painted this base blue and then I added some white paint and a lighter blue and I just wiped my hand with it. Um, or you can use the brush to spread it across and it makes that really pretty acid wash look that you see on denim. And now we're just gonna roll the paint on the brush and we're gonna make some pockets over here. Make sure to dip your brush back in the paint so that way you get like an even coat of the same amount of paint. And then on these, we're gonna do a V as well. And of course, we're probably gonna do a design on these, I'm not sure. Probably because this pair is larger, this is like a full figured pair of short shorts, which I totally adore then we'll do a design over here. Super, super cute. You've got to try these. You have got to make at least one pair. They will be the talk of the town. As you're designing jewelry, that's something to think about, right? Make your own statement pieces. Again, I was inspired by a jewelry designer. Well, I don't know if she was designing jewelry. I know she was painting stuff, painting um, wood pieces. But I didn't see where she had like a, a jewelry design website. But that's where I got the inspiration for this design from. And I just think they're really cute. And I love that you can make them in different sizes, right? To represent all of our different beautiful shapes, all of our different beautiful sizes. So that way, you know, no one feels discriminated against in terms of their size, because a lot of times full figured women feel left out of clothing design, which I totally agree, because I don't have like a perfect figure eight shape. And so a lot of times when I go to buy clothes, it's like, who do they make these for? Like, this is a mess. And so this incorporates everyone. So we have big, we have small, and we have medium size, not big. We have voluptuous, not big. Okay, so let's make sure they look close enough. I think I need to widen this one a little bit on the side. Ooh, my coffee hadn't kicked in yet. fix right here a little bit and then we're gonna let these dry super super cute what are y'all doing today i'm not sure if it's evening time when i'm gonna load this so i hope you have had an incredible sunday and a great weekend and that you've gotten to be a chance to be creative you have to set aside time for your creativity um i know it's hard especially because we're all so busy but you have to make time for the things that matter to you um, cause life is short. Okay. And then I noticed where I need to make this one over here look a little bit more diagonal. I think the line got off just a little bit. So let's add a bit of a point to that. I'm going to get carried away and then have to fix it later. So. Okay. 
And let me just match it up on this side too. Y'all, it is beautiful here today. So I think we're gonna do is we're gonna put some chicken out on the grill. Um, not cook out, but just grill out a little bit. What are y'all planning to do today? Planning to do today. My words kind of ran together. So let's let all of our short shorts dry. And then Sorry for being quiet. I'm just trying to fix that up. Okay, we'll be back. Oh. Okay, everyone. So here are the supplies you're going to need for the designs that you may choose to do on the back of your denim short shorts, booty shorts, whatever you want to call them, right? Hot, cute summer. So I'm using some really pretty summery type paints. And so I'm going to create a flower design which I've not done, but I figured we could do a dot daisy, right? It's not gonna be some intricate flower design. And so these are the colors that I'm using. I'll put them in the description box. And of course, for those of you that um, know me, I love to use pretty plates to paint on. I have a um, paint palette somewhere around here and it has paint still in it. I gotta clean it out. Oh, I'm not gonna use that color because it's not open yet. So I will use Stand by, let me get my color. I had one of those already open, so I didn't want to open that one. I mean, they're close. So the yellow color I'm using is like a gold. It's like a mustard yellow. This one is Sea Breeze, and these are Americana Deco Art Paints. Oh, that hadn't been opened yet. Oh, how weird. Okay, well, let's open it. Sorry about that, y'all. Okay, sorry about that. So let's shake it up really well. And so I'm gonna do a floral design on the pockets because I just think that'd be super cute. So I'm just putting out the paint colors that I'm gonna use to make my flower design. This is a purple and it's called Purple Pizzazz. And this is a pink called Carousel Pink. These are kind of like my favorite colors. I feel like I use them all the time. And let me tell you what else you're gonna need. So you need your paint colors, whatever colors you wanna do your flowers with. And then you also need, <laughs> I'm telling you, my caffeine has not kicked in yet. So you're also gonna need these pokey tools. And so if you recall, I shared with you that you can get these from the Dollar Tree. Right now they have these, I mean, literally for a dollar. And I know mine cost more than that years ago when I bought them, but they have little balls on the end. And you can do polka dots and different designs. These are called stylus. That's the technical term. I'm just saying pokey tools, but they have different size ball diameters on the tip. And you can use these to make polka dots and different designs. So I'm gonna use them to make a daisy type flower. And that's what we're gonna do. So let's start with, I was gonna do it on the smaller pair first, but let's start with the bigger pair, I guess. So decide what color you want your petals to be. And you're just gonna make polka dots, right? And then you can always fill in the colors to be whatever you want. You can do your center flower, whatever color you want. I'm saying a flower and I pray it comes out looking like a flower. <laughs> so we're just making polka dots and then as we go along, it should end up coming out looking like a daisy. That's kind of how I want it to look. Or you could even do a sunflower since this is such a gold color. So you're gonna wipe off your, your um, ball stylus. And then, well, I guess I'll go ahead and do the other ones so they match up while we're doing them. And just think about it. If you have studs, like I have a pair of studs I could put on the backs of any of the pockets to make them look like, um, you know, like when you see studs and rhinestones and things like that on the back of your denim jeans that you buy in real life. So we could do something really cute like that. So I'm gonna go in and fill in all the spaces that we have for the dots. 
I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fill in the spaces for this one as well. And a lot of times when I get ready to sit down and make stuff, I don't necessarily have in mind exactly how I'm going to do it. I just know in my vision kind of what I want it to look like. So now let's do purple and we'll do purple in the center. So we'll let the purple be like the center of our flower. You can kind of just spread it out like that. And that'll be like the center of the flower, like when you see the center of a star, of a, um, of a star, not a starfish, <laughs> when you see the center of a sunflower and it's brown, but ours is gonna be that pretty purple color. And then around the purple, you can start doing like some pink dots. Cause this is our flower design, so it can look like however we want it to look. We just want it to be a design on the back pocket of the jean. Y'all may hear my son doing dishes in the background. Thank you, honey. So, we're just putting cute dots. Uh-oh, I touched the blue by accident. Doing cute dots, and this is just our denim design and how cute, cute, cute is that. You may be, now you could probably freehand a super cute um, design. I'm not, I'm not good at freehand and design. So now we're just gonna add some blue in there. And this is how I envision my back pocket looking for my earring design. And then we're gonna add some of the turquoise and the darker blue color as well. And that's gonna be so cute. So what I may do with the teal one is put it kind of in the center of the purple. That's cute. But I kind of want to add some more of the teal other places as well. So let's go ahead and add some of the teal around the mustard color. And again, this is your design. Make it whatever you want but this is how I see my pocket design for my jeans. And then we're gonna let this dry. And of course, all of these are gonna get a gloss coat. So they are really gonna pop and shine and be so super cute. Now with the stud or the rhinestone you wanna add, you probably wanna add that um, after the gloss potentially. So let's see. Okay, so we're finished with that one. Super cute. And so we're gonna sit that one to the side to dry. And then we're gonna do the next one. So on this one, I kind of envision doing something pink. You could put a star on the back of these. I mean, you could make them whatever you want. So I'm trying to decide if I want to do some type of line or some type of little X or something like that. So let me figure that out. We'll be right. So I decided I wanted to do like an orange and a pink and a purple kind of flower on one of these. And so let's see how that turns out. So let's do this one first. We're still using the ball stylus. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the dot on. And then I'm gonna make the middle part of the stamen like a yellow. So all I did was put a bunch of dots and join them together. And I'm making it look like more of a daisy this time. And then I think that I'm gonna put a green stem to it as well, but let's, let's go ahead and put the daisy on this one. And with their dot tool, you should be able to get at least a couple of um, dots of paint out before you have to refill your little dot tool, your stylus, your ball stylus. And again, you can get this for a dollar, okay? I don't wanna get carried away. I was gonna put some more, but let's leave that alone. So let's go ahead and put our center gold color in there. So it looks like a little Gerber daisy, huh? So it looks like a little Gerber daisy. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like a green stem using my brush. Oops, sorry y'all. 
So we're gonna use this brush and then I'm gonna get a green color right quick. So instead of using green, we already have these paints out. I'm gonna go ahead and use the turquoise blue, the teal, and this color is actually teal mint. Okay, so let's put the um, stem on the little flowers. And again, your design, you can do whatever color you want. And so what I'm gonna do, let's move this out of the way. I feel like that's blocking stuff. So I just took a little bit of the green paint and I'm just gonna do a cute floral stem. And then we're gonna add some little leaves to it. And your leaves could even be a different color if you want them to. Right, so all we're doing is lines. That's all the little leaf is, is some lines. That kind of looked like a cactus, didn't it? <laughs> Look how cute that is. So let's add some leaves. And then I think I almost want to add a little bit of pink to it just so it has some super cute contrast. So let me clean my brush off. And we can use our little ball tool to put, let's use the smaller ball because that way it doesn't take up so much of the flower. Oh my gosh, y'all, how cute is that? And just imagine that once we put the, um, the gloss on, how pretty it's gonna be, so. Look how sweet, and move this out of the way. Look how sweet that is. So I also could go ahead and put like some, I could keep adding stuff to it. So let's see what we're gonna do with that one. And then this is how these turned out, which I'm gonna do a little bit more stitching on that one. So let's do that right quick. So right here, let's go ahead and I wanna add like kinda like the stitching like we have right here on these jeans. I wanna do something similar to that here but my paint dried up. I think that I need to add a little bit more paint. So let's do that. And I'm putting it in a different spot. So I'm using fresh paint and not some that's gotten dried up because it'll be harder to work with. So I'm using the thinner point of the stylus tool and I'm just gonna kind of do a diagonal line and I'm gonna bring it back around probably going to do kind of like a triangle design where we're going down and then we're going up. So we're just doing these or upside down triangles. And again, it's not going to be perfectly straight because we're working one with a stylus and two it's not a pen, it's paint, right? <laughs> so I think it's gonna be really, really cute though. So look how cute that is. So we're just giving the jeans like some seams, like a design. So we're gonna do this and we're gonna come down. I'm gonna go back up. And we're gonna come down. And again, if you go over too far, just know that you can go back over it and touch it up with some blue paint. It'll be fine. Okay. How pretty is that? And so now what I wanna do is I wanna do some little lines inside of those just to give it like, um, see how that's, these are like belt loops. So we're gonna do some belt loops inside of here. So all we're gonna do is a line straight down and a line straight down. And that's just supposed to imitate belt loops in the denim. Cute. So again, on this pair, we're just doing lines straight down, straight down, and we're just creating belt loops. So adorable. So we're gonna sit those off to the side. And now what we're gonna do with this particular pair is they're smaller, so I don't wanna try to overpower them with um, 
that wide of a triangle design. So I think that I wanna do like just a polka dot underneath the, um, the denim line right here or give it some type of different polka dots along there. I'm not sure yet. So give me a minute to think about that one. Right okay, so I decided with this particular pair that I wanna do like a color line underneath here just to kind of tie it in to the flower that's already there. So, I mean, I think they look so sweet already, but I wanna tie in something as it relates to the jean to the flower. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna use the pink color and I'm just gonna use the same brush we've been using. Again, this brush is by Crafts Choice, it's number R9250, and it's a Royal and Langnickel brush. And so it comes in a set, I believe. I've had them for about a year or two. So I'm gonna do my best to have a steady hand just to create a pink line across the jeans. I'm not sure if I wanna go inside the white band or underneath the white band, so let's see. I think that I'm just gonna go underneath the white band. And I'm moving closer to the white than I am to the blue. Meaning I'm overlapping more on the white side of the line than I am on the blue side of the line. And my hand pressure got a little too heavy. So I'm gonna go back over it, but I'm gonna let that dry. But I like that. So all I did was create a pink little line so that it looks like those jeans have a pink seam going underneath them. I'm do the same one on this one. And so I'm gonna be, be a little less heavy handed, at least I'm gonna try to be. Again, I'm going closer to the white line than I am inside the blue. I'm gonna try not to go back over it like I just did. Um, so I don't create a glop there in the middle. Just try to carry it all the way out to the end because we can always go back over the line once it dries. And we're gonna do that anyway to darken it. I know my house is kind of loud, y'all bear with me. But um, that's really cute. So right where I got a little bit too much of the pink in my mind on the white, I'll show you. Look how cute that is. But the pink goes up on the white a little bit right there. I can let that dry and then just go back over it with a little bit of white paint and it won't even matter. So look how cute those are. Super sweet. And how pretty these are. Super sweet. And now we have one more pair to do. And so I'm trying to decide on this pair if I'm gonna do some type of stud or rhinestone. So let's decide on that and we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna use these studs, which are silver squares. I better not open that, but I feel like they might be too big for the pocket because it kind of would take up one whole pocket. And then I remembered I had these super cute gold studs, which I think would make it stand out. And I have this really cool glitterific um, silver and gold paint and it's more silver than gold. So we're gonna go with that. So what I'm gonna do is, again, remember I shared with you how thick this paint is. So we're gonna use the end of our brush. And I tend to use the end of some brushes that I, not that I don't care about them, but if they get messed up on the end, it doesn't really matter because that's what I use them for. But I always wipe them off. And then what I'm doing is I'm just placing a dollop in the pocket trying to get some glitter off. I noticed that that one came out more clear than glittery, but we can let it dry. I'm just pushing it down. So it has glitter in the pocket. I'm gonna add a little bit more on this one to make sure I get some more gold flecks in there. And then we are gonna add the gold square on the other side, so super cute. That might take a minute to dry because we're, it was a dollop versus just painted on. 
So I'm gonna spread that out a little bit and I'm gonna spread this one out a little bit too. Might need help getting that on there, Let's see. So I'm just gonna smash that down a little bit and make sure they're even. Cause you know, once it's dry, we can't go back and scrape it off. I think this one's a little bit wider than that one. So let's push that in a little bit. I feel like I'm performing surgery. I think we need a little bit more right here. Okay, and of course you can skip past this part on the video. I know it's a little bit tedious, but gotta get it on there. Okay, and so now what we're gonna do is I'm going to, okay, this is Glitterific Paint. This is the color, because they don't have colors per se, I don't believe. They don't have names. So this is Glitterific Paint by Plaid. I use it all the time. You've probably seen it in other videos. You can get it from Michaels on the paint aisle. So now what we wanna do is I wanna smash this out a little bit more and then we're gonna stand by, I'm gonna glue one of the tiny gold studs on the other pocket, so stay tuned. Okay, so these have semi-dried just a little bit, but we're not trying to wait for them to get dry. It was just, you don't know because the video continues to roll, right? <laughs> but we did let them dry, just for those of you that are gonna repeat the process of making this. And so remember I told you that a lot of these studs have sticky parts on the back that you'll wanna pull off because if you go to glue them on and over time that sticky part gets dry rotted, then they could fall off. So that means if you sold it to someone and then the stud falls off, you know, that's just not a good look. So in order to avoid that, just take the sticky part off the back. And now what I'm gonna do, of course, is this, this bottle of glue, my E6000 glue, and you can get this, I think the Dollar Tree has this. I don't remember if I've seen it there. I say that every time, but I know for sure Michaels has it. So you can get you some of the E6000 glue. You could use super glue if you wanted to. I'm probably gonna throw this tube away after today because I have a new tube. I was just trying to use all I could out of this. One. Okay, so I had to go and fight with the glue container to <laughs> get some glue out of it. I did it off camera. So I was like, okay, you are not cooperating. So let's put some glue down in there. I may have to open the new one, let's see. Let me put that down. There we go. Yeah, can I say, and I know I said this before, I am so ready to go on vacation. Like Jesus, when is the world going to reopen and get out of time out? Oh my gosh. And um, I was asking my husband, did he want to go to Florida? And he was like, uh, no, we can go to somewhere else. So we normally go to D.C., Maryland, that area, South Carolina or Georgia. But, um, you know, we got to wait for the world to reopen and to get out the time out here. So anyway, here we are. We're going to glue this one down to this pocket. And the glue dries clear, so don't worry about if some of the glue kind of spills over around the stud because you can always get that off. But of course, if you see some that's wet and you have your little pointer tool, you can use that. Now the other thing is right in here, we can see a little bit of the blue as well down underneath that gold stud. We can just put some white right there. So another thing I'm probably gonna do is put a dotted design for the seam across the top of those, but let me finish getting the other stud put on, it would be right. Back. Okay, so we are finishing up. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put the gloss, you're good, honey, okay. on these and make them shiny, but I just wanted to show you how super cute they turned out. So that's the flower design that I put on the larger pair. This is the super cute daisy the flower and I added a few more color lines on this pair. Oh, but you know what I realized I hadn't painted the back yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and gloss them instead. I can always paint the back 
once they are finished glossing. These already had the backs painted because these were previously painted hearts. I may go ahead and do those, but anyway, I can always touch up the back, but I really wanna show you what the finished product looks like. So this is where we added the glitter and we added the little stud on the back of this particular one and they came out super cute. So I'm gonna head and add, I'm gonna do the three dimensional Mod Podge because I'm just a fan and I still have not yet purchased any more of my favorite, which is the triple thick. I need to do that this week. So anyway, and I keep going to the store, I just keep forgetting. So while we're letting those finish drying, we'll just do a little bit of our Mod Podge glaze on the larger pair. I'm going to get all three of them done and we'll come back. I'm not going to bore you with watching that, but for now, just so you remember, I normally would do the raised areas first of a design. I'm not going to do a thick portion of it because I want it to dry today before Moses comes down and now is a baby. So we're just going to do a thin coat. And so I'm going to do inside the raised areas because that's where sometimes it can settle. And so that's all we're doing. And I'm not even squeezing now. I'm just spreading it around. So after you get a little bit out on your design, just start spreading it around using the nozzle tip. And then of course, check for any air bubbles that you may see or have while you're working on the project. And then you can pop those while everything is still wet. So I'm gonna go get this done and then we'll be back so you can see the finished result, but they are gonna be super cute see what they look like as they were drying. They are really, really adorable. And so they're gonna be hanging earrings. They're gonna be so pretty. I thought about doing a couple of posts, but right now I'm thinking we're just gonna stick with hanging hey earrings. guys, so we are finally finishing up and I'm gonna show you like some of the little touches I put on a few of them. So some things you're gonna need or wanna have on hand for your earrings, of course, are different findings, right? So I have post backs, which is for peers. I have these super cute um, closed hook earrings. I have fish hooks, which we all are used to using. And I have a couple of pairs of clip-ons. Now you can get any of these from your local craft store. Sometimes I find they're cheaper to order online on an Etsy or eBay or rings and things, places like that, Amazon. It just depends on where you wanna order from. You're also gonna need some jump rings you all know what those are and some eye pins so today i'm actually going to add a few of these super cute little beads let me show you to one or two pairs of the earrings so let's see let's put all this stuff down so i thought these were super cute and they're going to give it like a bit of an ethnic vibe um they look like a tribal shield i think they're super cute so I believe that I'm gonna add those to these. They're gonna be so cute. I hadn't decided what else I'm gonna add to everything else, but we'll see as we go along. Just wanted to show those to you and look how they came out. All of them are dry. I've already drilled the holes before I came back on camera. I added little dots. Remember there were holes on them. I gotta touch up and clean up the backs, but this is what they came out as a finished product. This is how this one came out as a finished product and this is how this one came out finished so they are so sweet and i just love the little short short booty short earrings i am going to clean up the backs because i want to sell these and then these are drying i had to touch up um, a little area of the pocket i fixed but these were already a completed pair anyway so let's get to compiling and putting okay, them together. so let's go ahead and put these together and i'm going to show you what i did right quick so I already have one of the little components already put together. So what I did was, you already know, I bought this pack of head pins and eye pins, in case you didn't know, right? And if you're new to making jewelry, a head pin has a little tip on it that looks like um, the tip of a needle, but with a little nail on it. It looks like a nail, a really skinny nail, and it will hold the beads on your craft item. And then the eye pin looks like the eye of a needle. So that's why they're called head pins and eye pins. And so what I did was I found these sweet little beads that we're gonna use that will complement the color of the earring. And I'm just stringing them on that way. Now y'all, I have a bead collection to end all bead collections because that used to be what I made predominantly. First it was polymer clay, then it was beads. And um, now I've gotten into painting jewelry, but I have an incredible bead collection. 
and I will share with you if I can find it because I've had these for years, but I attend a beach show in, I used to attend a beach show in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where all the wholesale bead companies come from out of Florida. Most of them are out of Florida. And so you could purchase the really chunky, beautiful beads, the ones you see at Michael's, but maybe two to three times better than those for a dollar a strand, $2 a strand, no more than $7 a strand, but these were semi-precious, gorgeous stones. So I'll do um, a bead um, show and tell. We'll do that maybe this week. So now that I have it on there, the components, I'm gonna cut this to the length that I want the earring to hang, okay? So you wanna leave enough of a space on your ring. Now don't throw these away because you can still make other eye pins out of these and I'll show you how to do that in a second if I don't forget, if I don't have a senior moment, right? Oh, I gotta get my one that makes loops. Okay, so here we are. So I had to get the one that makes loops. And so now what you're gonna do to make a loop is just you're gonna turn forward, bend back a little bit, turn again. And there you end up with a loop. I almost cut it kind of short, but we already got it there. We're gonna make it. We're not gonna try to be a perfectionist about it. So now you're gonna take your jump ring. You're gonna open it up. And remember I shared with you that you wanna go through the back because if you go through the front of your earring and you've already made it um, glossy, you could scrape the you could scrape the gloss area and then you have to touch it up. And sometimes that's just a bit of a pain. So we're gonna thread our little accoutrement on there, our bead decoration. And so look how pretty that is. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add a smaller jump ring on here because I want them to hang a certain way. And a lot of times when I was making jewelry, if I, I would just add these without, I would just make it and attach it to that hook but by adding the jump ring, it makes you not have to fight with the fish hook because the fish hooks don't always go the direction that you want them to go and then you gotta bend them and all that jazz. Many of you know what I'm talking about. So that's why a lot of people don't even mess around with fish hook earrings. Oh, I gotta, let me turn it around. So these are super cute. They came out probably more decorative than I expected them to, but I think they're really beautiful um, because Nothing wrong with having a simple pair of earrings, but how pretty are these? And so they're one of a kind, they're unique, short, short, or booty short earrings, whatever you wanna call them, super pretty. So now let's make the other pair and match them up. I'm gonna do that off camera. Well, I'll do it on camera so you can see it. You can always skip forward past this if you don't wanna see me do it again. So I'm just gonna cut the eye pin, gonna bend it forward, and I'm gonna bend it back and I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna add our larger jump ring to the earring from the back so it's not scratching up the design. Now you don't prob you probably would be better off doing this with flat nose pliers instead of those round nose pliers. So this is a flat nose plier. So you wanna have this in your jewelry arsenal flat nose and round nose. So let's go ahead and put the accoutrement piece on, the component. You can use your pliers to force that closed. And now let's go ahead and put our smaller jump ring on. And then we're gonna make sure the fish hook is facing us so that when we close it up, and I never know if it's facing me until I close it. <laughs> and I've been doing this for 31 years, right? I counted up the years yesterday. My first jewelry business at 19, I have been designing jewelry for 31 years, right? Maybe 32, I'm 51, so you do the math. And it's still a passion and hasn't gotten old, okay? So here we go. So look, that's the first pair. Look how cute those are. Look how sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna sit those to the side and let's go about making the next pair. So let's do this pair 
even though one of them is drying, we can still go ahead and get this one done. And I'm gonna keep it simple. So with this one, I'm just gonna do a hook closure but I wanna do more of a drop closure. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put the jump rings on this one, only because I think they're already pretty decorative with the flower and with the pink stone on it already. I don't wanna over complicate what's already a really cute earring. I need to get a smaller jump ring. So let me close this. And we're gonna wait and do the other one. So let's finish this one. Let me get a smaller jump ring right quick. Be right back. Okay, so we're gonna put the smaller jump ring on, but when you go to put it on the loop closure that we're using over here, well, one, I need to make sure I'm closing this up a little tighter because this is a wider millimeter. Uh-oh, that's why I wanted to close, oh, that fell off. Okay, so let's just tighten this up a little bit. So because we're going to put on the smaller jump ring, we don't want that getting loose at some point and kind of coming off because if the, closure is not all the way done, then it'll, it'll come loose. So let's put that on and then let's close it up. And we're going to do the same thing to the other one after it's dry. I had to go back and touch up the gloss part where the earring hole was because I got too close to it. So now to make sure that's closed, you can always go in and do a clamp down with your um, with your pliers. These are kind of large pliers for this, but you would just, sorry about that, you would press down flat like that and put some pressure on it. So look how super cute those are. Oh my gosh, right? Are those not booty adorable cute? <laughs> I'm just joking using that word. So short, short earrings, super cute with a little flower pocket design. I mean, they are just precious. So I do want to go ahead and do the other one, although I know in my mind I'm saying I should wait, but I want to get them done because we're on camera together. Y'all, I am so hungry. I am waiting on my husband to fire up this grill. We're having like um, hamburgers, hot dogs. I made deviled eggs. I made a broccoli and cauliflower salad. What else did I make? Um, not that one. I made... Um, Oh, like a cucumber kimchi sorta, of, but it's mainly just cucumbers with sesame seed oil, a little bit of rice wine vinegar, some red pepper, crushed red pepper, and some salt, and it's so good. And it kind of does not go with anything else I just mentioned, but I wanted it. So anyway, I made that, and I'm trying to think, I feel like I made something else, but maybe not. So we're gonna go ahead and put the other, oh wait, let me make sure, I can see that that's still open a little bit, so let's close that up, and let's clamp it down so it doesn't come loose. And you don't wanna do it too hard, you don't wanna make it flat. Let's put our other baby jump ring on there. And let's put our other closure on, and let's close up the baby jump ring. I figure since he's taken a minute to, um, well, he was working in the yard, so it's not like he's lollygagging or anything, but I'm probably gonna work out right quick because I told y'all I'm trying to get summertime fine. Now, I wouldn't wear any little shorts like this, but I definitely wear these earrings. <laughs> I think they're so pretty, so I'm gonna push that together and then I'm going to clamp it down. Ooh, child, I don't need glasses for seeing. I need glasses for long distance, but these these things look small today. Okay, so, oh my gosh, you guys. Look how super cute. I'm screaming. So let's set those to the side, and then that, that'll give that one time to dry. And now let's decide what we're gonna do with these. So I decided that I did wanna have a post pair or a clip-on pair, but I realized in doing that, I drilled a hole up top, right? So I'm probably not gonna be Oh, I guess we still could. Let me see. I wanted them to be hanging, though. Like, I wanted to be able to hang them that way, and I had figured out how we were going to do that. Yeah, right I had to go into my arsenal, and I had to dig in my mind and be like, okay, how are we going to put this together? So, I'm going to show you how I just did this, how I put together the clip-on component, and how it is going to make 
one of the short, short pairs of earrings, a clip on, how super cute. Because I was like, well, dang, I already drilled a hole. What am I gonna do? So I dug into my arsenal to find these really pretty denim colored studs that I had. So these are stickers, you already know that. I get these, these are by recollections. I get these on the sticker owl at Michael's. And these were, it doesn't have a price, but they're normally pretty, they're expensive to me, but you know, $3.99. Um, normally, and then if you have your 50% off coupon, which they have not been given out lately at all. So we're gonna have to do the one, those have a silver trim, so that's my only concern. But I think I'm gonna be okay with the gold showing behind it. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna be good with the gold showing behind it because in the infamous words of Tabitha Brown, that's my business, right? But wait, let me look for one more thing. Oh my gosh, y'all have some cute stuff over here. Okay, forget it. Because that would be smaller, let me look and see if I like the knickknacks better. So these are knickknacks. They're $1.99. I want to say I got these from AC Moore when they were in business, but I was just thinking how cute. Okay, so let's do that because that's pink. That's going to go with everything we already have going and all that jazz. So we're gonna do that instead of the blue. So let's set our blue off to the side. And let me show you how I made the clip-on attachment to go with this earring. So what I did was I took the larger millimeter jump ring that I already had, and I'm gonna fish it through the back of that earring and I'm gonna close it up. Of course, you can skip past any of this. It's a video, it's not cement, right? <laughs> But I don't want to skip past steps. I know sometimes my videos are long, but if you want to remake it, I want you to be able to know how to remake it, right? So there's that one. I'm going to take another jump ring the same size, and I'm going to loop it around the back of the clip-on, right? So therefore, it's hanging. And I'm just going to... Oh, I'm sorry. And I'm going to loop it to that loop. And then we're going to close it up. Normally I'd be using my other pair of pliers that have a better grip, but they're inside the cup that you're sitting inside of. <laughs> One day I'm gonna show y'all my setup. I keep saying that. So, oh, I have it backwards. So let's turn that around. Bloopers. Okay. So we're closing that up, making it secure tightening it up and now I still have to paint the backs of these but I wanted to go ahead and get them finished before we do that so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue our little super shiny knickknacks onto these and I could cover the little knickknacks with a little bit of Mod Podge but I'm not gonna do that they were already a bead so they probably already have some type of coating over them so let's do that okay, and so I'm right just back. gonna show you how I'm doing one of these and then we're gonna let them dry and we'll come back. So I am putting a healthy amount of glue on the back of the component we're using. And I'm gonna show you, I've done this before, but just in case it's your first time watching one of my videos, let's move it to the middle. Make sure we have it spread out really well. And then we're gonna attach it to the clip-on base. So now that it's on the clip-on base, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press it down. And when I go to press it down, sorry about that. When I go to press it down, it's gonna make all the other glue come up, okay? And because it makes all the other glue come up, if we leave it and let it dry that way, it's gonna stick in the ears and like be prickly. So I'm gonna move that little brush out of the way. And we're just gonna, you can use a Q-tip, you can use a toothpick, you can use anything you want, but I don't paint with these brushes. So that's why I'm okay using this one. And all you're gonna do is scrape the excess glue off. So now I'm gonna sit it down on the table and I'm just gonna press really hard one more time because I want to make sure all that glue, one, I wanna make sure it's attached really well and two, I wanna make sure that um, 
none of that glue is left sticking up in there. Now, a little bit of glue had gotten on my jump ring, so I just want to clean that off. So we're going to let that one dry. I'm going to do it one more time on this one and try not to drop it. Be a little bit more professional, okay? Sorry about that. So we got a good helping heaping of glue. I'm sitting it in the middle. I'm going to do one more dot of glue. Now, it doesn't start to dry really fast, but nevertheless, it's glue, so you want to work as quickly as possible. So I'm going to sit that down on the table, press it into the middle. That's what I should have done the first time. Press it down. And see all the glue, how it's kind of sticking up and gooey coming through the component. Now, if you had flat back components, you really wouldn't have to be concerned with this, but I'm gonna smear it across so that we have a good covering, a great covering actually. And get off the excess, I'm gonna wipe that off. And after my brush dries, then I'll clean that off. But let's let that dry, we'll come back and I'm gonna show you what that's okay, so I had another super cute idea. So remember these little pieces I got from Hobby Lobby? They were $3.99 and they're actually bales. So I've already attached one to the earring, but I decided to take it off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue these super cute stones onto the bale because they'll fit perfectly. And, or should I do that one? Ugh, no, the, the stone is super cute. So I'm gonna glue these onto the bales. And then what I'm gonna do after we glue them onto the bales is I'm gonna make these post earrings. So they're gonna hang and they're gonna have the stone and they're gonna be post earrings. So super, super cute. Okay, so let's get that done. Oh, I'll look, be right back. They fit perfectly. Oh my gosh, how super cute is that? So now we're gonna put these on here. They're not dry yet. So I'm just gonna be kind of cautious about it. We're gonna close that up and then because it's sitting inside the bale, I am gonna hold it up and show it to you. But look how pretty they are. They are the hottest of the hottest, so cute. So let's attach the other one and then I'm not gonna put the post back on because they need time to dry. So let's just show you what everything looks like finished and i want you to make some I, I know you can do this it's not hard this is a simple little design prayerfully i showed it to you simple as all get out so you can copy it let me turn that around and make you some money this summer right now selling your own designs look how pretty those are So cute. Okay, so stand by one second. Let me show you they all look like today. Okay, don't scream. Cuteness is served. I mean, can we say statement earring, honey? Oh my gosh. Okay, so those are perfection. You can make these. They are so adorable. I know you can do it. So let's look at another pair. I'm putting them on the white background because I had paint on the other one. So I was like, let's just hang them up on here. So let's, that one's going to cooperate. Thank you all so much too. I always know I say like and subscribe at the end, but you know what to do. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Are those not the most adorable short, short earrings ever? So cute. Let's sit those off to the side. And this pair. The top of one of them is still drying, so I'm gonna be gentle with those. But just so super cute, I can't stand it. I wanna keep every last one of them for myself. Okay, and these are still drying as well, so let's sit those up. So pretty. All right, so that's it for this video thank you for your patience and watching i pray you try out some of these super cute designs i know that you're going to sell out of them if you make them and people are going to love them